And so our product was the iPod 5th generation classic. Uh, it originally sold for $300 in the United States of America and it is used to listen to music and uh, it was first released in 2001 and this type of iPod was released about every one and a half years but there is many other types so that's why they been so many since 2001. How much are they now? Uh, they're discontinued. They're discontinued. I know but I mean like a, like a simple, simple iPod. Uh, well, or do they even make them anymore? They have a shuffle, that's and that's $50. Yeah, that's about it. Or it's $50 for or a shuffle? Yeah, which is useless because it's like 2 gigabytes of memory, so yeah. that's absolutely trash. So most people just use their smartphones, smartphones now, yeah. Yeah. Right. as this is an outdated product. But you can't run yeah. this. Yes. 300 bucks for paper, that's sure. crazy. <laughs> One point people thought it was worth it. I still have exactly. it. So it kind of functions basically like any computer. User input, use the little quick wheel, then it goes to the motherboard, which will put something on the LCD, the screen display, you know, like say you're clicking a song. Then it'll go to the hard drive, it'll find that song, and then it'll take that back, send it to the motherboard, the motherboard will put it back out to the headphone jack, and you will hear some great tunes. So, my part, I did the bottom portion of it, which uh, was a conductor, and uh, here's some other. So the I property value and my value were not very correct for mass or volume. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the material I chose, but I just chose the basic aluminum. Uh, my density was kind of close, not really, but... And uh, surface area, that uh, was probably the closest. Here's the uh, views from Inventor. And here's the actual product with a sketch. I bought it. Buy the sketch. I did not draw that. I would like to take full credit. That's a beautiful sketch. <laughs> Trace it. I did the uh, top of the outer shell. It was a piece of plastic, so it obviously wasn't uh, you know, magnetic. It did not conduct electricity. And those are the other things. If I bent it, it was obviously going to like snap in half. And if you scratch it, it, this one will like kind of scratch a little deeper, but it's it's more resistant than the back. The back of those iPods, when they're like all the silver ones, I'm sure you guys had like an iPod Touch, and they just got all messed up. Yep. Again, uh, our eye properties are nowhere near. <laughs> what I don't know if we're bad at measuring or if we're bad at uh, Autodesk. Probably both. Because I know for our volume, we went to the chem lab and our parts were so big and we just took a giant beaker and we kind of guesstimated how much water moved. Well, there had, the beaker had to be big enough to hold the part, yeah. but then it was off by it. You had to, it was 100 milliliters between each thing, but our parts really weren't that big. Yeah. They just took up a lot of like... Room. What we should have done is uh, what Mr. Herman said, where you take a little uh, a thing, I don't know what you call Still it. Still cup. Still cup, yeah. So you, you have a little thing here with water, and then you drop your thing in, and it'll spill off the excess water into another more precise graduated cylinder that but you don't just guess to hold. It, so. yeah. yeah. This is the lovely Autodesk. What are you watching? Oh, the dimensions are there. Yeah, it's just bad quality. It's bad quality because it was taken with an iPhone. <laughs> Whoa, wait, you can screen cap it? I can't screen cap on that. Whoa. These are the, uh, where can I go with that? See, here's the dimensions. <laughs> oh, that's trustworthy. See, this is the lovely, uh, lovely sketch again. And here's the top case, and then this is kind of the inside of the iPod. And then here's the back of the top, uh, top case. So this is the battery. It uh, primarily just keeps the phone on, or not the phone, the iPod on. And uh, incredibly, it had a 25-hour span that it could charge your iPod for, which is a lot compared to the iPhones of today. Yes. This is of course, it didn't drive. have it didn't have a lot of uh, power that it needed to draw, though. No, it did. Playing a song was all doing. This is the hard drive. Lovely sketch. The hard drive. Uh, this one was a 30 gigabyte hard drive. They went up to uh, like 
120, I think, is where they finished. Mm -hmm. Or they actually, they had one that was 160. And an interesting thing about these is uh, if you get an old one right now, uh, you can like make a mod where you can put like an SSD in there, and so you can get up to like a thousand gigabytes of storage for uh, if you replace the hard drive with an SSD, which is very strange and also really expensive and not worth it at all because it's an iPod. <laughs> So this is the head at headphone jack and the uh, power button, which isn't like the power button on your smartphone. It actually slid back and forth on the top. So here's the headphone jack, and then the power button was under here. No, it was right here. Right there, yeah. Yes, and that would slide back and forth to power the iPod. A whole lot of ribbon cables. Yes. This is the motherboard. As you can see, the sketch is very detailed. You know, it looks exactly like. And uh, motherboard, you just see the basics. So this would be the front. You would put your uh, click wheel over on top of this, and then your buttons were actually clickable. And on the back side, we see the uh, little port adapter for you to put in your uh, charging and also to connect to computer. And we also see like these little ribbon cable slots to connect like the headphone jack and the LCD and all of that. So it all connected to the motherboard. Uh, these are the protection strips that uh, went around the hard drive. It kept the uh, whole thing so it would stay in the case better and it was uh, firm and it didn't move it out on the inside. This is the lovely frame. Uh, pretty sturdy metal, but uh, yeah, just there to hold everything in place on the inside of it. And this is the LCD screen, uh, pretty basic. This would connect to the motherboard, and it would light up the music choices. The click wheel, the infamous click wheel. As you can see the back here, it's got a little bit of like conductiveness to press those buttons on the motherboard. And it's got the, you know, the lovely click wheel iconic image. So the manufacturing procedure, back when this iPod was made, humans were still assembling this part or this whole thing, and robots were not. It was assembled in China, and they would send the parts to a place in China, and they're ma manufactured all over the place. Uh, they actually, this was one of the first ones that they used microns, and uh, 25,400 microns equals an inch, so that's, that's how they measure it, so the iPod was uh, as like precise as they could get it, and all the parts would uh, go together real nicely, and they used diamond tools to also do that. So recycling the iPod, I, uh, Apple has a recycling program where you can give them your old iPod. There's some stuff, you can give them your old anything, and they might give you like an in-store credit, but for something like this, they would not give you an in-store credit, but they will take it from you and they will recycle it. Uh, Iowa doesn't have an Apple recycling center, but you can like just take it to the store and they'll do it. But 15 other states have an actual, like, they recycle it there, yeah, at that center. And they say they want it back because it's some of the battery. They say it's safer if you give it back to them. Yeah. So they have a program like this. Because you don't want the battery just leaking out in the environment. And that is that. All right. Any questions?